Hey everyone, welcome back to our channel. In today's tutorial, we're going to build a simple shopping cart application using Python. If you're new to programming, don't worry, we'll take it step by step, and by the end of this video, you'll have a clear understanding of how to create a basic shopping cart. So, let's dive right in. We start by defining a function called display cart function. This function will display the contents of our shopping cart. And this function takes a cart parameter. This cart is a list that will contain our items. Now we start the actual code inside the function, the if not cart. This line checks if the cart list is empty. If it is, the code inside this block executes, and we want to print a message saying, your cart is empty. And if the cart is not empty, we move to the else block. Here, we first print shopping cart to give the user a clear heading. All right. Now, we set up a variable called total price to keep track of the total cost of all items, and we set it to zero. We then use a for loop to go through each item in the cart list. Inside the loop, we use string formatting to print the name and price of each item. Here, we use Python built-in function, print, to display output in the console. The F before the opening quote indicates that this string is a formatted string literal, allowing you to embed expressions within curly braces. Here, item is assumed to be a dictionary, and we're accessing the value associated with the key name. This is used to retrieve the name of the item in the shopping cart. After the expression within the curly braces, we have a colon and a space. This is used to separate the item's name from its price in the printed output. This is another expression within curly braces. Here, we're accessing the value associated with the key price in the item dictionary. This retrieves the price of the item. The closing curly brace ends the expression inside the F string. Putting it all together, the F string takes the name of the item from item name, adds a colon and a space, and then adds the price of the item with a dollar sign in front, obtained from item price. Now, we also add the price of the current item to the total price. We are updating the total price variable by adding the price of the current item to it. This is a shorthand notation for updating a variable by adding a value to it. It means add the value on the right side to the current value of the variable on the left side and update the variable with the result. Here, you're accessing the value associated with the key price in the item dictionary. This retrieves the price of the current item in the shopping cart. This line is inside a loop which means it will execute repeatedly for each item in the shopping cart, and we using a formatted string, f string, to print out the total price of all items in the shopping cart with a specific format. This is included to add a dollar sign before the value, indicating currency. Total price. This is the variable that holds the total price of all items in the shopping cart, and this colon is used to separate the variable name from the format specification. This dot 2 indicates that you want to display the value with exactly two digits after the decimal point, and this F indicates that you're formatting a floating point number. All right, now we lay the foundation for our shopping cart application. Now we will define a function called main that will be our program's heart. Inside this function, we create an empty list named cart, which will store the items the user selects. Now we will use the while true loop. It ensures that the program keeps running indefinitely until we decide to stop. Next step is to display a menu to the user. This menu will give them options to interact with our shopping cart application. Inside the loop, we display the menu options using print. We print the title of the program, which acts as a header. The end character sequence is used to insert a new line before the title, creating some space between the previous output, if any, and the title. We print the first option of the menu, which is add item to cart, and the number one indicates the choice number, and the following text is the description of the option. 
Similar to the previous line, we print the second option of the menu, View Cart, and again, similar to the previous lines, we print the third option of the menu, Remove Item from Cart. Finally, we print the last option of the menu, Exit. The next line of code is essential because it enables user interaction with our program. We will create a variable called Choice to store user's input. This variable will hold the user's selection, allowing us to determine which action they want to perform, and we're using the input, function, to prompt the user for their choice. The text within the parentheses, enter your choice, acts as a prompt to guide the user. The input, function, pauses the program's execution and waits for the user to provide input. All right. Now we use an if condition. If choice is equal to 1, this is a conditional statement that checks whether the value of the variable choice is equal to the string 1. And inside the indented block following the if statement, we use item name variable equal to the input function displays the text enter item name and waits for the user to type something and press enter. The value that the user types is stored in the variable item name. Now we will create variable called item price and the input function displays the text enter item price and waits for the user to input a value. The value is read as a string, but since prices are typically numbers with decimal points, it's converted to a floating point number using the float me function and the converted price is stored in the variable item price. Now we will create a dictionary named item. This dictionary has two key value pairs. The key name is associated with the value stored in the item name variable, the name of the item, and the key price is associated with the value stored in the item price variable, the price of the item. This line adds the item dictionary representing the item's name and price, to a list named cart and the append. Function adds the item dictionary to the end of the cart list. After the item has been added to the cart, we want to print the message item added to cart to inform the user that the addition was successful. Moving on to option two, let's see how we can view the contents of our cart. First, we check if the user's choice is equal to two. We will write another condition with elif and choice is equal to 2. If it is, we execute the code block indented under elif choice equal to 2, and in this code block, we call a function called display cart. Now, let's take a closer look at the display cart function. This function is responsible for showing the contents of our shopping cart. It's important because when we're shopping online, we want to see what's in our cart before we make a purchase, right? All right. Now let's handle option three, where we can remove items from the cart. Option three is all about removing items from the cart. This is a handy feature because, in real-world shopping, you might change your mind about a product or quantity. Let's see how we do it in our Python shopping cart. We will write another condition with alif and choice is equal to three. If the user enters three, we first check if the cart is empty. If it's not, we display the cart using display cart and then ask the user to enter the item number to remove. We remove the item based on the user's input. Inside this code block, we will use an if-else statement. Now, let's focus on the first part of the if-else statement, which checks if the cart is empty. If the cart is empty, we display a message saying your cart is already empty. This is important because we want to inform the user if they don't have any items in their cart. Next, let's explore the second part of the if-else statement, which executes when the cart is not empty. If the cart is not empty, we first call the display cart function. This shows the user the contents of their cart so they can see what they want to remove. Then, we ask the user to enter the item number they want to remove. Now, imagine you have added a few items to your cart, like apples, bananas, and oranges. You've decided to remove one of them, so you select option 3. When you select option 3 and press Enter, 
the code checks if your cart is empty. If it's not empty, it displays the contents of your cart. Then, the code asks you to enter the item number you want to remove. For example, if you want to remove bananas and you'd enter 2 and press enter, let's see how the code removes the item based on your input. The item number you enter is stored in the item index variable, and we subtract 1 from it because lists in Python are zero-based meaning the first item is at index 0, the second at 1, and so on. With the correct item index, the code removes the item from your cart. If you entered 2 to remove bananas, the code will remove bananas from your cart. That's how you remove items from your shopping cart in our Python shopping cart application. It's a crucial feature for managing your cart effectively. So, option 3 allows us to remove items from our cart, but we need to make sure we're removing the correct item. Let's take a closer look at these lines of code. Here's what's happening step by step in these lines of code. We start with an if statement, which checks whether item index is greater than or equal to 0 and less than the length of our cart list using length function. This if statement ensures that we're trying to remove an item that actually exists in our cart. Now let's see how we check whether the item index is valid. First, it checks if item index is greater than or equal to zero. In Python, lists are zero-based, so the first item is at index zero, the second at index one, and so on. Second, it checks if item index is less than the length of our cart list. This ensures that we're not trying to remove an item beyond the end of our cart. If the condition is met, we move on to actually removing the item from the cart. We use the pop method. If you remember, we discussed about pop method in our last video, which removes and returns the item at the specified index and we use built-in Python function print used to print a message to let the user know which item was removed and inside the print. Function is a formatted string, often referred to as an F string. F strings are a convenient way to create strings with dynamic content, where we can insert variables or expressions directly into the string. The formatted string starts with the static text, removed item. This part of the string remains constant and doesn't change. Now, here comes the interesting part. Inside the curly braces, Borao, we have removed item name. This is where the magic happens. The removed item here is a variable that represents an item from our shopping cart that has just been removed. It's a dictionary containing information about the item, including its name. So, Removed item name is used to access the name key within the removed item dictionary. This retrieves the name of the item that has been removed. When this line of code is executed, it combines the static text, removed item, with the dynamically fetched name of the removed item. And suppose if the item index is not valid, outside the range of items in the cart, we enter the else block. This block simply prints invalid item number, to let the user know that they entered an item number that doesn't exist in their cart. Now let's jump into the final option number four. To exit from the shopping cart, we use another elif block. This block checks if the user chose option four, which is to exit the application. If the user entered four, this line prints exiting the application, and then we use break to exit the program. Finally, we have another else block that handles all other cases. If the user enters anything other than options 1, 2, 3, or 4, this block prints invalid choice. Please select a valid option to guide the user to make a valid selection. And it's time to use a common Python programming construct used to check if the Python script is being run as the main program or if it's being imported as a module into another script. Here's an explanation of what it means. In Python, when you run a script, the Python interpreter sets a special built-in variable called name. If the script is the main program being executed, name is set to main.
If the script is being imported as a module into another script, name is set to the name of the module. That is the file name without the .py extension. The purpose of using if name equal main is used to make sure that the main function is executed only when the script is run as the main program. This is where the core logic of your shopping cart application resides. If someone imports your shopping cart script as a module into another script, the main function won't automatically run. It will only run if the script is executed directly. Be imported and used in other scripts without unintended side effects. We're on the cusp of experiencing our shopping cart script in action. Let's proceed with running the script and walking through the process of adding items, viewing the cart, removing items, and exiting. First, Python will prompt you to make a choice. Choose option number one and press enter, which triggers a request to input the item's name. Enter the item name, such as laptop, and confirm by hitting enter. Now let's enter the price of the laptop and hit enter. There you go. Items are added to the card. Now let's inspect our card's contents. Select option two and press enter. Voila. The list of items in the card appears before us. When it's time to conclude the shopping session, select option four and hit enter to smoothly exit the shopping cart. Just like that, you've successfully navigated the shopping cart interface, completing your shopping experience. And there you have it, a seamless shopping adventure. And there you have it, a simple shopping cart application in Python using lists and list methods. You've learned about functions, user input, and more. Keep experimenting and enhancing this project. Summarize the key points covered in the video. We have provide the complete Python code in the below description. I hope you found this tutorial helpful and fun. If you have any questions or want to see more tutorials like this, please let me know in the comments. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this video with fellow learners. Happy coding!